Hi guys, welcome back to my Elixir Phoenix 1.3 tutorial series. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be using Phoenix 1.3 to build out a GraphQL API. The model for this program that we're going to be using will have users and it will have a bunch of pages. In essence, it will be a blog. I know that's cliche, but whatever. I figure it will be a good way to show off some of the GraphQL features inside of Elixir. Because we are building an API, we don't want any HTML and we don't really need branch. All we need to do is add in these two flags when we're building our Phoenix project, dash dash no HTML and dash dash no branch. This will remove our HTML as well as the node layer respectively. So GraphQL is a data query language that was developed by Facebook as an alternative to REST. In most cases, you can build a GraphQL layer on top of a RESTful API layer. That's no different inside of Phoenix. We could build both a RESTful API as well as a GraphQL API on top of one another without having to sacrifice anything. But in this case, we're just going to be focusing on the GraphQL API. With our project having been generated, we want to get a few libraries. We want to get points this helps us parse JSON. We want to get absinthe. This is our GraphQL library and accordingly we need absinthe plug and absinthe ecto. We also want to get faker which will allow us to create some fake data. Now we can get all of our dependencies just simply by running mix do depths.get comma compile and this will get all of our dependencies and then compile our project. Okay so now that everything has been compiled we can actually start building our data schemas. I'm going to be using the phoenix gen json command even though we're not going to be using the json that it creates. And so we just use mix phx.gen.json. Then we put in the context. In this case, we want accounts. And then for our user, it's going to be called user users. And then we'll have a name string and an email string. Like with before, we want to get our resources users and put it inside of our router. And I'm just going to do this right now because it's easier. But later you'll see that we come back into our router and we'll mess around with it to get GraphQL working properly. For our second schema, we want to say Phoenix Gen json posts so that's our context and then we'll have post posts and inside of this we'll have a title which will be a string our body will be text and then we'll have a user id which references our user's schema so i know that might be harder to read let me zoom it out a little bit okay so that's a little better now you can see that user id references users and you're going to get this little thing that's going to ask you if you want to interactively override you want to hit yes then again you want to take your resource and put it inside of your router now we want to build our database then we want to jump into our application and make a slight change to our user model. We want to add this simple field that says has many posts and then we want to reference our graphical posts post. That way our schema users is connected to our post schema. All right, so now let's create our migrations inside of our database. And like always, all we have to do is run mix ecto migrate and this will do all of it for us. Okay, so now we want to use faker to create some seed data. So we go into our priv repo seeds.exs and we want to alias our graphical graphical.accounts and our graphical.posts. And this is where our faker library will come in handy. So you can see here that we're calling accounts create user. And then I'm manually putting two users in here, one called John Doe and the other one called Jackie Rossi. And I'm giving each of them an email. Then we're iterating from one to 10 and we're going to call posts create post. For our post title, we want to call faker lorem sentence. And this will create a lorem ipsum sentence for us. Then for our body, we want to call faker lorem paragraph and this will create a larger amount of text that will be lorem ipsum style and then for our user id we want to take a list of one and two and then we'll use enum take random and this will take one of the items from this list and then we'll take the head of that list which will be that one item and we'll put it in as the user id because we only have two users we only want to choose between two user ids and this will create 10 posts for us and they will be randomly assigned to our users now to actually run our seeds file all we need to do is run mid run priv repo seeds.exs and if it worked properly you'll see all of the sql that actually got run to put everything into our database now that we have our database set up with some dummy data inside of it we want to start thinking about our graphql types graphql has types and they're very similar to a database schema however we do not need to actually represent the actual structure of the data in our database instead we use them to symbolically represent what exactly our data should look like so whoever is querying our database will be able to know what types of data they'll be getting. So we're going to go into our graphical web folder and we're going to create a schema folder. And then inside of this schema folder, we're going to create a file called types 
.ex. And our module here will be called Graphical Web Schema Types. And inside of our Schema Types module, we want to reference our Absinthe Schema Notation and our Absinthe Echo, which references our repository, which is our graphical repo. The Absinthe Schema Notation module will give us the DSL that we need to define our GraphQL types. And we'll use our Absinthe Echo module to enable helpers for batching association requests. First, we'll define our user object. And if we remember what our Ecto schema looks like, this sort of will mirror how it looks. So our user object will have an ID inside of it, and then it will have a name, which will be of type string, and then a field email, which will also be a type string. And then we'll have a field called posts, which will be a list of post type, and it will resolve to an association of posts. So now we want to create our object for our post. And our post will also have an ID. It will have a title, which will be a string, and a body, which will also be a string. String. And then we'll have a reference to our user. So this will be user, user, resolve, associ user. So unlike the top where we have a user that can have multiple posts, our posts can only have one referenced user. There are a few things to keep in mind. Our ID fields have a special type of ID, and this kind of represents a unique identifier. We can use our ID to do many different things, like caching, for instance. Our other fields are using the scalar type string, and there are some other predefined scalar types inside of GraphQL. Well, for instance, they have a URL scalar type, which would be good if we were passing back and forth URLs. Okay, so now that we have our types defined, we want to create a schema file inside of our graphical web folder. And this will just be called schema.ex. And the module for this will just be graphicalweb.schema. We want to use our absent schema module, and then we want to import the types that we just created in our graphical web schema types module. Now, we use this file to help us define what types of queries that we want our users to be able to do. So in this case, we're going to say, okay, they can query posts, which will be a list of post type, and this will resolve using this function here, which we haven't created yet. And they can query our users, which will be a list of users, and this should be user, and this will resolve to our graphical user resolver dot all, which is another function that we haven't created yet. You can see that these resolver functions are using this elixir type syntax, and the resolver functions themselves are used to help describe how we actually get the data out of our database. So inside of our graphical elixir application, we want to create a folder called resolvers. And then we want to create two files, one called postresolver.ex and the other one called userresolver.ex. We want our user resolver to alias graphical.accounts so that it can easily get into our repo. And then for our all function, we just want to call our accounts.listusers function to get all of our users out of our database. For our post resolver, we're going to do a similar thing. So we're just going to alias our graphical.posts. And then for our all function, Function, we're going to call post.list posts, which will get all of our posts out of our database and list them onto our GraphQL API. So with the way things are set up right now, we can return lists of our posts and lists of our users, but we also want to make it so that we can just return one single user as well. Inside of our schema, we want to add another field, and this one will be called user, and the type will be user. And this one will have an argument inside of it. This argument will be our ID, and we want our ID to be non-null, so we put this non-null function in here, and then this will resolve with our graphical user resolver find function. With our find function, we'll destruct our arguments into to a map with our ID, and then we'll call accounts.getUser and pass our ID into it. And if we get back nil, then we want to pass back an error and say that the user ID was not found. And if we get our user, then we just want to pass back our user. Okay, so now that we have this all set up, we want to actually set up our router so that we can actually ping GraphQL properly. So currently, this is all pointing towards a backslash API scope. We kind of want to use that backslash API. So I'm going to make this so that this points at our index. And we'll add two plugs. One of them will forward to API. And this will point us towards our absinthe plug and the schema of graphical web schema. And then we'll have another forward, which will point us towards graphical with a QL. And this will point us towards absinthe plug graphical and our schema that we built. Now we can run our Phoenix server just by simply running mix phx.server and then we can point our browser towards localhost 4000 so g-r-a-p-h-i-q-l and this will bring up a nice little graphql ui that we can use to query our api so we can query our graphql api by simply saying okay we want our user id of one and the name of that user and this will give us back john doe we can also query all of our posts by simply typing in posts with title and body and you can see here that we have all of our posts inside of our database 
database as well. And if we want to, we can see which users have which posts. So for instance, John Doe has all of these posts and Jackie Rossi has these posts. And we can choose if we want to see the title and the body or just the body for each of the posts, which is kind of nice. So this says users posts, and this gives us the title and the body. So we can fetch the entire post by user, or we can just fetch them in a big old batch. And we can even filter our users by putting in an ID. So for instance, say I just want to get the ID of one, which is our John Doe, and get all the posts for him, I can do that as well. So here we have our name, John Doe, and then we have our title and body for all of our posts that are connected to him. Probably the best thing about GraphQL is that it makes it fairly easy for us to implement the rest of our CRUD operations. Currently, we only have read operations, but if we wanted to, we could implement create, update, and delete fairly simply. And in fact, that's what we will be doing tomorrow in our application. And then after that, maybe we'll even add some authentication so that you can see how we can even do user authentication through GraphQL. So if you like this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. All right, guys, have a good night.